The next item of business today is the Members' Business Debate on Motion Number 12898 in the name of Bob Doris on celebrating the work of Home Start in North Glasgow and across Scotland. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I'd be grateful if those members who wish to speak in the debate could press the request to speak buttons now. Could I also ask people leaving the gallery to do so quietly, please? This Parliament is still in session. Thank you. I call on Bob Doris. Seven minutes, please, Mr Doris. OK, um, thank you, President Officer. Can I begin by thanking my parliamentary colleagues across the Chamber who have signed my motion, which highlights the excellent work of Home Start across Scotland and, of course, the work of Homestart Glasgow North in particular. I welcome to the Parliament this afternoon representatives of Homestart, including many of the volunteers and staff who work with the families who have benefited from the support offered from the team at Homestart Glasgow North. It is inspirational to see the drive and the commitment that exists amongst everyone involved with the organisation. And I pay tribute also to the work of Nikki O'Hara and Francis Goldman in helping to create such a nurturing and supportive environment at Homestart Glasgow North for staff, volunteers and families alike. I hope members will be able to join our visitors to Parliament for informal gathering directly after this debate. Presiding officer, in the last year, Homestart Glasgow North helped 108 families, providing volunteer-led support for many families in communities such as Mary Hill, Postle Park, and right across the north of the city. That's a 63% increase in families supported in just one year. And I'm pleased that increased funding has allowed Home Start to recruit and to train more staff and volunteers to support my vulnerable constituents. It is worth noting, though, that despite increased funds, Home Start still has a significant waiting list for vulnerable families requiring assistance. And I'll say maybe just a little bit more about funding towards the end of my speech. One of the strengths of Home Start is that volunteers are not viewed as a statutory service and, as a result, often find it easier to build up trust and friendship with families. However, they do receive referrals from statutory services, including health visitors, social work and the, the One Glasgow Joint Support teams. Such referrals are increasing, as are self-referrals to the service. Families referred have a number of challenges. In the, in the last year, 30%, 36% of children uh, faced behavioural challenges. 34% had developmental issues. And other challenges included a number of physical and mental health issues being experienced. However, the most compelling fact is that 67% of families felt socially isolated. Now, we know all these challenges put children's well-being at risk. For example, the Scottish Government's Growing Up in Scotland report states that by age four, children who experienced prolonged, repeated exposure to a mother with mental health problems were particularly likely to have poor behavioural, emotional and social outcomes. I believe actually that every single MSP in this chamber, we all ourselves have a mental health that needs nurtured, just as we do our physical health. We are not in ourselves any more resilient to mental health issues than anyone else in society. It's the impact of poverty and deprivation for many of the families and communities that I represent, which causes such significant health inequalities that I refer to. It is such poverty and deprivation which leads to that 67% social isolation figure that I referred to earlier also. But this is a, a positive debate because Home Start Glasgow North helps fantastic families develop that resilience. And an important aspect of this is their volunteer home visiting service that offers practical and emotional support to struggling families. And that's crucial. By doing so, Home Start respects each family's dignity and identity and can respond to individual needs. It's about giving families choice and matching the right volunteer with the right family, building trust, lending a listening ear, and being non-judgmental are core to offering that vital support. Working together builds confidence, it strengthens relationships, and having fun, actually, and all for the ultimate benefit of the children. Likewise, their family support group helps support families' growing confidence 
and to overcome this social isolation that, that I have mentioned. And Caroline, their family support group worker, organises a variety of fun-filled programmes which can include baby massage, dental health care, baking and even learning traditional Scottish lullabies. And perhaps we'll get some of that later on in the reception after uh, this afternoon's debate. And I'm pleased that Homestart are also coordinating peer support during the perinatal period from pregnancy to the age of one. And that's vital. And it's vital for women in particular with poor perinatal mental health. And Homestart are also responding specifically to the needs of the local community and have developed, amongst other things, projects such as Sing and Grow Music Therapy courses, important to boost children's parent-child attachment development, and working alongside education services, for example, with homework club, uh, clubs for kinship carers. And moving forward as an organisation, I commend... Yes, yes of course. Joanne Lament. For taking inter intervention, I regret I'm unable to stay for the whole of the debate, but I'm sure Bob Doris would acknowledge the work done by Homestart in the south of the city and far beyond that. And I wonder what it is that we can do in this Carers Week to recognise the importance of that work, but that also that work is under uh, very profound financial pressures. How do we, across the Parliament, restore that valuing of the voluntary sector and these, the people who are so committed uh, to making a difference to young people's lives? Bob Doris. Well, I'm very aware of uh, the, the good work that Homestart does in Glasgow South. I know some of my colleagues will be specifically raising, raising that within this debate, and I'll be specifically talking about financial pressures towards the, the end of, of, of my speech, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to stay for that, and you'll, you, you'll hear my answer to that then. In relation to carers, of course, I would say the Carers Bill going through the Scottish Parliament, I think, offers one route to improve the situation for many families. So, having spoken to the, the Homestart team in Glasgow North, I know that the support offered can be rewarding for staff and volunteers, uh, as it is actually for the families that benefit from the services. Also, presiding officer, and I now want to come on and talk a little bit about funding, because Homestart Glasgow North are one of only two Homestarts in Scotland with no statutory core funding, and it continues to depend on lottery funding, as well as funds from organisations such as the Robertson Trust and Lloyds TSB. I'm pleased that the Scottish Government has supported Homestart Glasgow North through the Early Years Change Fund, and I also, based on what I'm now about to go on and say, recognise the financial challenges within the public sector. However, Glasgow City Council currently does not allow organisations such as Homestart Glasgow North to bid for funding from their Integrated Grants Fund, and that's just plain wrong. When, when the next round of funding opens in 2017 for the IGF, I hope that whoever's running Glasgow City Council will remove that unfair barrier. Given Homestart Glasgow North achieved 97% in its recent quality assurance review, confirming their high standards throughout their work, working practices, surely this barrier should be lifted. However, today is about the staff and the volunteers at Homestart Glasgow North and across Scotland, of course, and I look forward to joining Homestart Glasgow North team to celebrate their 15th birthday next year, and I thank them for all they do, staff and volunteers alike, to make the communities that I represent a better place to live and for our children a better place to grow up. And in closing, presiding officer, can I pay tribute to all the successes over the years. I know that Homestart Glasgow North will go from strength to strength in the years ahead, and I look forward to helping to support staff, volunteers and families on that journey. Many thanks. Uh, due to the number of members who wish to speak in this debate, I'm minded to accept a motion from Bob Doris under Rule 8.14.3 that the debate be extended by up to 30 minutes. Mr Doris? Yep, formally moved. Thank you. Is Parliament agreed? We are. Uh, even at that, the debate will be quite tight and I ask members to keep to the four minutes if possible, please. Patricia Ferguson to be followed by James Dornan. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And before I begin, may I apologise to you and to the Chamber that I won't be able to stay for the entire debate as I have visitors from my constituency here today. And may I also apologise to any home staff home start, rather, staff, clients or volunteers from my constituency, that for the same reason, I don't think I'll be able to join them for the reception that I now understand will follow this debate. And that I won't have the opportunity to speak with folk from my constituency is a real disappointment to me. So I will uh, today make arrangements to do so uh, in the constituency uh, in the very near future. Presiding officer, today's world can be frightening 
and it can appear hostile as everyone seems to go at 100 miles an hour. And there are so many challenges to be faced in everyday life, how to find a job or how to keep it, how to navigate your way through an increasingly complex and often unfair benefit system, the challenge of ill health or of not having a house that fits your family's needs. The list is endless and the pressure and the feeling of isolation too often takes its toll on families. And sometimes the opportunity to talk through those problems and to have someone who won't judge you, but who can offer some support or suggest another way of looking at things can make a real difference to families. And that's where Homestart comes in. And I say that's where Homestart comes in, but of course, a Homestart volunteer doesn't just appear. All of Homestart's volunteers are trained and carefully matched with individual families, and that relationship is, at the end of the day, based on choice. So too is the support Homestart offers, whether it's working in family groups, as we've heard, or supporting families on an individual basis. Homestart tries to ensure that the approach they take is one that is right for that particular family. Now, over the years, I've spoken to families right across Maryhill and Springburn who've worked with Homestart. They have unfailingly praised the organisation and have talked, often movingly, about the difference that Homestart has made to their family. And the one word that has always come up, a small but important word, is quite simply fun. Because every single person or family group I've spoken to has suggested that being part of a home start uh, is actually a very fun experience for them. That to me is important because to my mind a family that can laugh together and enjoy one another's company will find it much easier to weather the storms that blow us all off course from time to time. Presiding officer, last week was volunteers week. And I wanted today to pay a special tribute to the Home Start volunteers. They are well trained and supported by the organisation staff. But even so, it isn't always easy to make the right connection with a family or to support them to establish their own priorities. But that is what Home Start volunteers do day in and day out. And they do so with great integrity and respect. And they deserve our grateful thanks for that. I hadn't planned to talk about funding in this particular date, be, debate because I wanted to talk more about Homestart as an organisation. But my understanding, and I may be wrong, is that Homestart want to be considered for integrated grant funding that the local authority provides, but that the local authority has made a decision that it will award that money on a three-year rolling programme. So I can understand that Homestart might see that as a route to funding being closed to them. But I would sincerely hope that by working with the elected members that the issue might be resolved at least for future funding rounds. And as I say, well, OK. Bob Happy Doris. To. I'm glad we just, this, this debate's not about funding. I quite ag agree, Ms Ferguson, in relation to that. I'm glad we agree on future funding opportunities. But understanding is the current integrated grants fund is a closed fund. Only those who already had cash were allowed to apply for this current fund. And that's the current guidelines. But I welcome your support to change Glasgow City Council regulations on that. Tricia Ferguson. Well, that's obviously a matter for Glasgow City Council and obviously Homestart have to engage with them about that. And given that we have all at many times over the years in this chamber suggested that there needs to be more stable funding and more guaranteed funding for voluntary organisations going forward, I think that we have to allow the local authority to look at this and to work with the organisations in its area to come up with the best possible opportunity. But as I said earlier, I would hope that by working with elected uh, members that the issue might be resolved at least for future funding rounds and I'm certainly happy to play my part in trying to make that happen. I would just say though that there was one slightly discordant note in the motion that I perhaps don't agree with and I say that slightly with my tongue in my cheek and that is that it ends by saying that it hopes that Home Start is successful in its aim to continue to bring about positive social change in Scotland's communities. Presiding officer, I'm slightly more optimistic than that. I'm absolutely sure that Home Start will be successful and will continue to be successful in its aim of continuing to bring about positive social change in Scotland's communities. They've been doing so for nearly 15 years and I see no reason why that's going to change. Thank you.
Thank you. I'd like the member to run over slightly because of the intervention. I now call James Dornan to be followed by Liz Smith, but would appreciate four minute speeches, please. Thank you, President Officer. I'd like to start off by thanking my colleague Bob Doris for bringing this debate to the Chamber. And also want to extend my welcome to those from Home Start who have travelled from across the country to hear this debate, uh, including Gillian Leslie, who is a development manager at Home Start Glasgow South. I hope she managed to get here. And in Glasgow South, I intend to go on to wax lyrically about. about. Parenting isn't always easy. Sometimes it feels like it's the hardest thing in the world to do, and the one-size-fits-all approach to it just doesn't work. And that's where Home Start comes in. They're there to help those folks, not only with the issues that always cause stress and anxiety for parents and children, such as illness, disability, bereavement and loneliness, but for other, more individual problems that many parents face. This can range from helping teenage mothers with access to education, single fathers with access to rights, to helping people affected by poverty, abuse, violence or social isolation, who may also need additional support to help give their children the best start in life. 258 families with 550 children are supported by Home Start in Glasgow South. And the most crucial part of their work is the work that they do supporting those vulnerable families in their homes. Volunteers with parenting experience visit once a week to offer emotional and practical support in a way that is informal, confidential, and crucially, as has already been said, non-judgmental. This non-judgmental part has come across time and time again as being one of the utmost importance when I've met with people who've been helped by the service. And a crucial aspect of this work is that the person who they turn to for support is also generally a parent or had parenting experience themselves. And that qualification uh, is needed when you are to, are to be considered as a Home Start volunteer. It's a cornerstone of their work because it means that you're sharing your fears with people who also get how tough and rewarding being a parent can be. The insecurities around trying to do the best for your children and feeling that you're failing is a feeling which I'm sure all parents can relate to. The Glasgow South branch is the biggest in Scotland, and I was delighted that the Minister for Children and Young People accepted my invitation earlier this year to come and see firsthand the work that they are doing, with a great complement of dedicated, committed staff and volunteers, led by the brilliant, passionate manager, Colette Boyle. At that visit, the Minister met with some of the volunteers and parents who have been helped by the service. Like the other 32 home starts across the country, Home Start Glasgow South is an autonomous body with its own charitable status. However, it still has the same central tenant as other home starts across the country, which children need a safe and happy environment in which to grow and develop. The Minister heard for herself the case of a young woman who felt that the service enabled her to recognise the situation she found herself in, where she'd lost control of her children, where she was concerned that she was going to end up going the same way as other members of her extended family have gone and not be able to create that future for her children that she so desired. This was not one of her own making, but of circumstances outside her control, and thanks to the help of Home Start, she began to realise that. Since interacting with Home Start, this young, incredibly impressive young woman now finds herself in control of her own circumstances, her children and her future. She began volunteering with Home Start and is now in regular employment. This is the reality of what Home Start can do. By their support, they can help their clients to improve their immediate situation, but probably more important, help them build their confidence to take control of their own lives, benefiting both themselves and their families. Presiding officer, I have great delight in commending the work of Home Start across Glasgow, across Scotland, but particularly in Glasgow South to the Chamber. They are a great organisation supporting many people across Glasgow South to ensure that they give their children the best start in life. I wish them every success in the future and all those who work, volunteer and benefit through Home Start across the country. Thank you. Many thanks. I now call Liz Smith to be followed by Cara Hilton. Uh, thank you, Deputy President Officer. And can I begin by uh, saying thank you to Bob Doris for bringing what I think is a very important motion to the Chamber and also to thank all those who do such fantastic work uh, with Home Start um, in, in my own constituency, uh, Mid-Scotland and Fife. I'm well aware of the extremely high regard in which uh, they are held. As the uh, motion rightly points out, Home Start supports uh, some 2,000 families and 4,000 young children across Scotland with a team of around 1,000 volunteers. And across the uh, UK, I think uh, Home Start is operating in something like 300 different towns, cities and rural communities now, including, obviously, in my own uh, patch, uh, the city of Perth, uh, which uh, the Home Start there was formed in 1984 and is now supporting around 150 families a year. I think one of the most important, one of the most successful aspects of the Home Start uh, is the focus on the 
well-being of parents and obviously of their families. And I think uh, Patricia Ferguson uh, in her contribution, I know she's no longer here, but I think she made an important point about the specialisms of the training uh, that go with that uh, individual uh, development. And I think that naturally uh, fosters uh, a feeling of uh, self-confidence and helps them to take uh, full advantage of the splendid support that's on offer from the volunteers. And obviously that support has to come from uh, a very wide different uh, variety of forms because it has to reflect uh, very difficult circumstances that obviously uh, many invaded and a lot of them can be very long term and that can include uh, loneliness and isolation, it can obviously include mental health issues, low self-esteem, poor physical health, uh, obviously in some occasions uh, domestic abuse and I think the incredible work that is carried out by the volunteers who are striving to tackle these issues, uh, it, it obviously has to be taken in collaboration with local authorities and health boards. Um, but I think the point about it being personalised and decentralised is extremely important because I think that autonomy uh, really matters to the character of the whole programme. And I totally accept the points that uh, Bob Doris raised when he mentioned about the financing of that because I think that has implications if you are going to deliver that at local level. I think that has uh, implications. And I think the very strong good news is that the, the concrete evidence that can be provided by Home Start uh, over uh, recent years uh, is really outstanding. And I think the University of Glamorgan, if I'm not mistaken, uh, conducted quite a lot of this uh, in sort of analytical ways. And, and it really uh, is showing uh, a huge increase in the number of families who are supported who can help themselves now. Um, and I think they, they put that in 2013. I think they said there was a jump from 29% up to 45%. And I think that's no mean feat in difficult circumstances. And I think as uh, members of Parliament, we always have to remember that there are real lives uh, here uh, and there are real constituents who not only need the help of these splendid volunteers, but they need our help and support uh, as well. So I, I know you're tight on time, Deputy Presiding Officer, so I'll finish there. But to thank Bob Doris for bringing what's a very uh, important motion to the Parliament, but also to th say thank you on behalf of constituents across Mid Scotland and Fife for the extraordinary work that is carried out. Many thanks. And I now call Cara Hilton to be followed by Graeme Day. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I begin by congratulating Bob Doris on securing today's debate, uh, celebrating the fantastic work of Homestart. It's also great to see so many representatives from Homestart in the gallery, especially on a day like today when it might be more tempting to sit in the park and eat an ice cream. Um, I'd like to pay a particular mention to Brian McCran and Sheila Leo from Dunfermline Home Start Board of Trust Trustees and also to Scheme Manager Kirsty Richardson who can't be here today but is doing a brilliant job for Dunfermline Home Start and for local families and volunteers. Over the past year, Home Start have supported 96 families, including 190 children in Dunfermline and South West Fife, either through one to one volunteer home visiting, their weekly family group, or a combination of both. Helping families with one or more children under the age of five and supporting them to achieve happy home environments where both parents and children can thrive. Providing early intervention to prevent families reaching crisis points and overcome some of the real challenges that every mum and dad can face. Open up, opening up opportunities to develop support networks and friendships at a time when many can feel isolated. Open up access to gym membership and swimming lessons which could have been out of reach thanks to a partnership with Fife Leisure Trust. Helping mums and dads get out of the house with day trips and outings, arts and craft, structured play sessions such as messy play and book bug, and information sessions ranging from budgeting skills to jewellery making and like other colleagues have said basically about having fun. On top of this, Dunfermline Home Start have developed new initiatives this year, such as group and one-to-one -one infant massage classes, and are working in partnership with other local agencies to deliver evidence-based parenting programmes to vulnerable families, such as Mellow Parenting. In Fife, the Council have embraced a radical agenda to transform early years and to end the cycle of disadvantage that too many children are caught up in. And Home Start locally have played a full role here as a partnership in the South West Family Nurture Hub, which delivers intensive family support services to local families in my constituency with children aged 0 to 3 and also to vulnerable mums during pregnancy. It would be impossible to celebrate the tremendous role that Home Start plays in our communities without celebrating the contribution of each and every volunteer. 
and Home Start Dunfermline rec rightly recognises that the 37 volunteers working across South West Fife to support local families are the organisation's most important assets. I know that every volunteer is carefully matched to the families that they support, and this is obviously absolutely vital in ensuring positive outcomes for those families. And it's not just a case of volunteers being dropped in at the deep end. Every volunteer is fully supported to build their own skills and confidence too. And I know that from speaking to some of the local volunteers, that the experience again from working with Homestart is both invaluable and rewarding. So in Dunfermline and right across Scotland, Homestart volunteers are doing an absolutely brilliant job in supporting mums and dads and improving the lives of vulnerable children and in making a real difference to our local communities. But the work of Homestart volunteers needs to be backed up by political change at local and national level too to improve children's life chances and transform their lives. Last November, I attended the launch of Homestart Scottish Manifesto, All Our Children. The manifesto has three key aims. That all our children should grow up with safe places to live and play, support when their parents suffer from a mental illness, and protection from hunger and poor nutrition. These are basic needs, yet right now, these needs aren't being met, meaning children are missing out on the support they need and deserve, impacting on their life chances, both now and in the future. And too many families right across Scotland are struggling day to day, week to week, and the strains and the stresses, whether due to poor housing, financial problems, benefit sanctions, mental health or addiction issues, often mean that children are missing out on the support, the stability and the nurture they need to thrive. In conclusion, Pride Deciding Officer, we all want Scotland to be the best place in the world to grow up. All children, wherever they are and whatever their backgrounds, have the right to the best possible start in life. I think the proposals for action in Home Starts Manifesto would be a good starting point and I would encourage the Minister to play, pay close attention to them. Home Start are calling on all political parties to put children's lives at the heart of policy making and I hope that across the Chamber we can work together to make sure this happens and to ensure that every family really does have the support they need, every child really does have the best possible start. I wish Home Start every future success and I'm confident that they will go from strength to strength in supporting families in Dunfermline, Fife and right across Scotland. Many thanks. I now call Graeme Day to be followed by Liam MacArthur. Uh, thank you. Uh, President Officer, may I begin by thanking Bob Doris for bringing this motion to the Chamber for debate. Firstly, because this affords Parliament a chance to recognise the achievements of Home Start across Scotland. And secondly, because it allows me to note the very positive work going on in my own constituency. And as members are well aware, that's not an opportunity I would ever let pass. Those of us who are parents know that raising a child can at times be as challenging as it is hugely rewarding. There's no manual for being a parent. Most of us base our approach uh, to bring up our children on what we experienced as youngsters ourselves. And if we're lucky, we'll have the parents who reared us to turn to for practical help and advice. But not everyone is that fortunate. And that is where Home Start can come in, supporting young parents as they learn to cope, to cope furnishing them with the knowledge and confidence to provide appropriate parenting for their kids. And of course, it's not just the children who benefit. Home Start's 2014 social impact report tells us that 95% of families supported felt their children's emotional and physical health and well-being had improved, and 94% of parents said their own emotional health had improved. Similarly, high percentages felt more involved in their children's development and better able to manage their children's behaviour. So we have the parents feeling empowered as well. Since Home Start began operating in Angus in 1994, it has helped over 1,100 young families, with over 260 volunteers giving up some of their free time to ensure that this service can be delivered. Those assisted have been parents who are feeling isolated, parents suffering from poor mental health, parents lacking the confidence to cope with the behaviour of their children. And mirroring the picture nationally, we've seen an extremely positive evaluation from those who are benefiting from the work of the organisation. A survey of 35 families in Angus who ended their interactions with the service during the period April 2014-15 found 94% felt less isolated and had made links with other parents and or services. 96% reported their emotional health had improved. 96% felt more confident in their parenting and had successfully implemented more positive parenting techniques. At the beginning of the year, uh, of this year, my colleague, uh, Mike Weir, MP, and I visited Home Start's premises, which are located just 100 yards from my own constituency office in Abroad. We were pleased to show our support for the organisation and to congratulate the team on securing a grant of £300,000 from Big Lottery Fund for their five-year Bumps and Beyond project. The project offers parents-to-be and new parents the opportunity to be a Home Start volunteer who themselves understands the pressures of family life. Home Start volunteers visit young families regularly in their own homes. For pre-birth and new parents, this means they can access help 
with practical preparations for having a new baby, such as getting to appointments, as well as having someone they can trust to talk to and share the experiences with. The big lottery funding was a major boost for the work of Homestart locally and provided a much needed degree of financial security. And the importance of landing that funding has since become all the more obvious with the news that the financing associated with the 2015-16 service level agreement with Angus Council has been cut by 5%. And the organisation has been advised that this is the first of three years of cuts in that funding. That, of course, is the economic reality for many third sector organisations across the UK. And let us recognise that councils have tough budgetary choices to make. But I do hope Homestart's work can continue undiminished because there is no sign of the demand for the services they offer reducing. Homestart, in my opinion, have a key role to play in helping to ensure that families requiring fairly basic uh, support can access that. And of course, by addressing any challenges that parents may face early on, or even better preventatively, we hopefully avoid far more serious issues arising further down the track. So can I conclude by again congratulating my colleague Bob Doris for allowing us to highlight the work done by Homestart in our communities and acknowledge its importance. Many thanks. And I now call Liam MacArthur to be followed by Malcolm Chisholm. Thank you very much, Deputy President Officer. And like uh, Patricia Ferguson, <coughs> can I offer my apologies that I may have to leave uh, shortly before the end of the debate. I've a meeting with Orkney's two MSYPs, Jack Nutquoy and Thorfinn Moffat, who I'm pleased to say have joined Home Start staff and volunteers in the public gallery this afternoon. But can I warmly congratulate Bob Doris on securing this important debate as his motion, I think, very fairly highlights the enormous but often unsung successes of home starting communities across Scotland and indeed the wider UK. 2,000 families uh, helped, 4,000 children given the support they need. These numbers in absolute terms may not sound particularly high in the context of Scotland as a whole, but we shouldn't lose sight of the vulnerability of those who benefit from input by home start workers and volunteers. These interventions can and do have a profound effect in changing lives, building, as the motion suggests, resilience and confidence and bringing about positive social change. By way of illustration, like Cara Hilton, I remember attending uh, the event in this parliament not so long ago, aimed at highlighting and celebrating the excellent work of Home Start around the country. A number of speakers addressed the meeting that evening, but without a doubt, the standout performers were two Home Start volunteers from, I think, the Alawa area. Both, for different reasons, had previously been recipients of Home Start support. Both talked candidly about the problems they'd experienced and the desperation, isolation and helplessness they felt by the time they came into co contact with Home Start. Both, though, provided the most eloquent testimony possible of the transformative effect that Home Start support can deliver. It was wonderful to see these two remarkable women having the confidence to share their experience with a group of largely strangers, um, albeit friendly ones, uh, in this parliament. More wonderful still was hearing how they are both now volunteering with Home Start, providing to others the kind of support that enabled them to rebuild their lives and thereby offering the hope and confidence about what the future holds. It really was a very moving and memorable occasion, one I felt privileged to be a part of. As colleagues may be aware, I lodged my own motion in support of the work of Home Start earlier this year. Uh, the reason for lodging that motion back in January was to acknowledge and welcome over £285,000 of big lottery funding for Home Start in Orkney. One of the great strengths, as Liz Smith indicated earlier, of Home Start is the way it tailors its provision to suit local circumstances. In Orkney, uh, self-evidently, those local circumstances include pressure to deliver support uh, to those who need it across a number of smaller islands. Thankfully, the big lottery funding is enabling that now to take place. A new coordinator for the Isles has been appointed and volunteers are being actively sought with a view to expanding the network to help develop parenting skills, build more positive family relationships and provide in communities not currently benefiting the sort of invaluable input that is Home Start's trademark. This really is good news as families in the remoter parts of my constituency often face additional challenges, notably in terms of isolation and financial costs. And that's why it's great to see Home Start expanding its reach beyond the mainland of Orkney out to the smaller islands. And as with other parts of the country, demand for Home Start services has been on the increase in Orkney even before this latest expansion of the service. Since 2010, volunteer hours have almost trebled 
and the number of families struggling to cope with mental ill health, abusive relationships, financial difficulties, as well as social isolation, is clearly on the rise. I'm very grateful, therefore, that Erica Copeland and her colleagues at Home Start Orkney are showing their determination to meet that challenge, though the prospect that, uh, of what may happen should the UK government press ahead with further welfare cuts is causing understandable anxiety. I would therefore uh, encourage both the Scottish and UK governments to heed the calls from Home Start for continued investment in support for families and children in the early years. Meantime, can I congratulate Bob Doris again uh, and thank all those involved in Home Start Orkney and across the country for the wonderful and very necessary work that they do on our behalf. Thank you. Thank you very much. I now call Malcolm Chisholm to be followed by Alec Ferguson. Uh, officer, can I congratulate Bob Doris on bringing forward this motion and also welcome all the representatives from different uh, Home Start groups across Scotland who are in the gallery, particularly the wonderful staff of the wonderful Leith and uh, North East Edinburgh Home Start. I was very pleased to open their new, relatively new, office on Leith Walk uh, four years ago, but in fact they have been active in Leith for all of uh, 30 years. They received 90% of their funding from the Council, and of course they're grateful for that, but uh, as with other groups, there are concerns about uh, future uh, that funding being continued, so I hope that the Council will um, maintain its commitment to uh, the wonderful work of this uh, group. It's one of several great children's organisations uh, in my constituency, and if I can mention two in particular that work with uh, Leith um, Home Start, uh, Dr. Bell's Family Centre in Leith and also Multicultural Family Base uh, in uh, Leith. Of course, I pay tribute to the staff, but we also need, as we're all uh, doing today, pay tribute to the volunteers. I think there was about 50 volunteers involved uh, with the Leith uh, uh, group uh, over uh, the, uh, um, last year. And um, I spoke to one volunteer who I know, in fact, uh, quite recently, and she was praising the, the wonderful training that they get before ever they do uh, engage uh, with families. And I met another volunteer recently as well who had, um, I think, extra training apart from the routine extra training as part of the Parents' Early Education Programme. And that volunteer participated in uh, the uh, twin babies group. That was a time-limited group, but other activities, of course, are ongoing. There's regular parent and children's groups, there's social events, and of course their central uh, feature of their work is a volunteer working with a family, and other speakers, of course, have referred to that. And what that means is tailored, personalised support to families in their own homes, and I think we could regard this uh, as a significant part of the preventative spend agenda that we all praise so often uh, in this parliament, but we need to promote examples uh, of that. The parents, uh, that the families that they're working with may be in di uh, diverse circumstances. Isolation, I think, was referred to by one of the previous speakers, bereavement, uh, multiple births, illness, disability, or just finding uh, parenting uh, a struggle. So in each case, the volunteers are responding to individual needs, respecting each family's dignity and identity. And as a result, I think we can hear from the different groups, parents are becoming more confident and developing stronger parent-child relationships. To quote just one uh, parent, uh, thanks to you, I feel there is always someone who cares, who believes that this difficult time will pass and who helps get through it. Now, of course, this work is not instead of statutory services, for example, uh, home start groups regularly um, emphasise the central role of health visitors and uh, ask for uh, more funding for them. And there have been reference already, I think, by Cara Hilton to the manifesto. Um, and I noticed that uh, the subtitle was Listen to the Voice of the Family. They're using their experience with families to advocate on the issues which they realise are important to those families. And uh, again, um, uh, Cara Hilton referred to the uh, mental health being one of the issues. And I note that uh, from its recent survey of Home Start in Scotland groups that 64% of children and participating families had no support from health and social work when parents suffered mental illness. So I think uh, certainly I noticed the Glasgow North group emphasised that aspect. It's not something that I've been so aware of with uh, some of the families at least, but I'm sure that there are mental health issues for some of them. So I wish all the best to the Glasgow North group. I wish all the best to the Leith group. I wish all the best to all the groups in Scotland. And I, I'm afraid that I was, I do have 
to leave at the scheduled end at uh, 1.15, so I'll only be able to listen to one more speech. But uh, uh, I think it's a good sign that we have a, a long debate because so many people feel strongly about this issue. Thank you very much. I have, though, extended the debate, and Parliament did agree to that. So we will be listening to two more speeches, then the Minister. Alec Ferguson, to be followed by Jane Baxter. Um, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And can I, like others, start off by congratulating Bob Doris warmly on bringing this debate to the Chamber? It's a hugely worthwhile debate, as the contributions of all members have shown, and I'm very pleased to be able to participate in it. Um, like others, I'm afraid I'm going to be uh, unashamedly parochial in my approach and um, speak of, the, of Homestart Wigtonshire in the extreme west of my constituency. I know the chair, Dorothy Scherer, is here with us today. I'm afraid my eyesight is aging rather more rapidly than the rest of us. I'm not able to visually, the rest of me, I should say, um, and I'm not able to visually confirm her presence, but I'm sure that is the case. Uh, I think the great strength of Homestart is that although it is a national charity, its various schemes and operations are very much rooted in the communities they serve and are managed locally. And I think that's, very much, that's certainly the case with Homestart Wigtonshire and would appear to be the case with others um, as has been raised. And I have no doubt that it's the core reason for the great success of this particular organisation. Homestart Wigtonshire has been running for 15 years now and in the last accountable year it provided support to 128 children from 60 different families right across Wigtonshire. And that is not an easy thing to do in such a rural area as Wigtonshire. Just identifying these most vulnerable families is, is a massive task because for reasons Bob Doris was talking about, poverty and social deprivation can lead to the isolation that Liam MacArthur and others um, uh, highlighted, and it is that isolation, particularly in a, a, a sparsely populated rural area, that I think makes the identification of these families so difficult, and it's hugely to the credit, I think, of Homestart and their partner organisations that they have been able to identify that number of people. They do so by operating three family groups known as the Tweenies around the, the county, um, this is funded by the big lottery and, and they are so sought after that each of these three groups now has a waiting list of families keen to join. Each uh, Tweenies group has its own dedicated project worker to ensure that they all meet local needs. But partly to overcome that waiting list issue and also to be able to provide the one-to-one -one visits that I think are very important in these uh, situations, um, Homestart also undertakes a huge number of home visits. Um, these are, of course, absolutely vital to give confidence back to those who, frankly, have none. And that lack of confidence can cover everything from simply feeding a baby to household budgeting and everything in between. And as everybody has highlighted, none of this could happen without the massive support of the volunteers who make it possible. Homestart Wigtonshire has 27 home visiting volunteers, along with the six trustees, 33 in total. And these selfless individuals undergo regular training in the wide range of specialisms that include things like welfare reform, first aid, child protection, hepatitis B, autism awareness, and a, and a whole range of other issues that might well, uh, they might have to encounter as they go about their work. They are selfless because what they're doing is passing on their own hard-earned experiences as parents, and all of us who have been parents know that those experiences are hard-earned, but they are passing on those experiences to others who, for whatever reason, have lost all confidence in their own parenting skills. When you meet the coordinator of Homestart Wigtonshire, Mary Wilson, and her administrator, Fiona MacDonald, who, along with the three project workers, make up the entire team, you instantly appreciate just how much that work means to them. It may be their jobs, but it clearly means so much more than just that. As the chairperson's latest report said, the staff team have delivered an outstanding service to the families we support and the referrers with whom we work. As their workload has increased, they have been put under considerable pressure to deliver, and they deserve our grateful thanks for their work in maintaining the professional standards we've come to expect. Indeed, they do. But I also think, presiding officer, that they deserve the grateful thanks of this parliament. And I am more than pleased to support the motion in front of us today as a way of doing just that. Thank you. Many thanks. And our final open debate speaker is Jane Baxter. Thank you. I'd like to add, amongst others, my congratulations to Bob Doris for securing this debate. A few months ago, I was fortunate enough to host the Homestart reception that colleagues have referred to here in the Scottish Parliament. 
At that event, which marked the launch of Homestart's first ever policy manifesto for Scotland, we heard from Professor Phil Hanlon, who is a Professor of Public Health at the University of Glasgow, and from Homestart UK's Chief Executive, Rob Parkinson, both of whom spoke about the challenges facing public services and the people who work in them. And they referred specifically to addressing the related challenges of having to provide support to families whose lives have been devastated by poverty and inequality, while at the same time being able to make the investments and interventions that have been proven to make a difference, and which will therefore, in the long run, reduce the human and financial cost of poverty in the future. After that, we heard from women from Alawa whose families have been supported by Home Start volunteers and whose lives have been changed by that help. Those women have been able to move on with their lives, not only to become Homestart volunteers, but crucially to develop as people, with the confidence and self-worth to want to grow and to effect positive change for themselves, their families and their communities. And this is the impact that Homestart can have on people's lives. We should encourage employers to help potential volunteers to get involved with Homestart. I myself have in the past allowed a member of my staff regular time off to volunteer with Homestart. Not all employers will be able to do this, but those who can, should. The Scottish Government should look closely at how to support employers who want to do this, but currently cannot. Homestart helps people for a, for a wide variety of reasons. When parents or children have mental health problems, as a result of difficult and traumatic births, or when parents encounter trouble at accessing the services and benefits that would help them to support their families, Homestart works with families day in and day out and deserves much greater recognition for their hard work. We should also keep in mind just how challenging the circumstances in which many of those who Homestart support are. More than four out of five Homestarts in Scotland work with families whose children are not protected from food poverty. This is higher than reported by Homestart elsewhere in the UK. Four out of five Homestarts work with families where children do not have safe places to live and play. Almost two thirds believe children in the families they work with are not adequately supported by health and social work services when parents suffer mental, mental, mental illness. I think it would be valuable for MSPs to read the Home Start Policy Manifesto. I urge them to do so. It highlights three main priorities. That all children should have safe places to live and play. That all children with a parent suffering from a mental illness should be supported. And that all children should be well nourished and protected from hunger and poor nutrition. Achieving that will require a coordinated and sustained effort by government at all levels and a willingness to think beyond departments or budget headings and to put tackling poverty at the heart of service planning and delivery for all public agencies. We live in a country where 350,000 children will live in cold homes this winter. For 200,000 children, those homes will be damp. That's a shame on all of us. And I sincerely hope that we begin to make progress in reversing the rising tide of child poverty in this country. And Homestart has a valuable role to play in this. It helps people to live better lives. It brings communities together. Professor Hanlon at the launch spoke about how scary it would be to be um, suddenly lost in the jungle and how scary that is for, for families who find themselves lost in the territory, of perhaps being homeless or in poverty. And he said that if you're lost in a scary jungle, you might find it helpful to talk to professionals or politicians who committed and highly skilled, but actually the best help you can get might be from someone else who lives in that jungle and knows what it's like to live there and knows how to find a way around and work out what's best for them. So he drew the parallel between living in a scary jungle and having someone who lives there and families living in scary communities, I use that word advisedly, and, and getting help from Homestart. So I hope this debate will be the beginning of increased recognition of the work that Homestart and its volunteers do every day across Scotland. It's difficult, scary work, but it's also valuable. We must all recognise the positive contribution that Homestart makes in each of our constituencies and regions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can I now invite Dr Alistair Allen to respond to the debate. Minister, seven minutes or so, please. Can I firstly... Uh, like many today, congratulate Bob Doris on securing this valuable debate about a service which, from what we've heard today, clearly impacts very positively on the lives of many of his constituents uh, and across Scotland and uh, more recently uh, across the UK as well. Homestart is a charity whose activities uh, in giving confidence and resilience to families is a cause worth celebrating in Parliament today uh, and I would likewise welcome those from the organisation who are in the gallery today. 
Presenting officer, our programme for government, which we published in November, set out three key priorities, creating a wealthier nation, promoting equality and empowering communities. Our success in delivering all of those priorities depends on the involvement of the third sector, including organisations such as Homestart. The third sector are essential partners to us in the services that they deliver to individuals across the country. The Scottish Government recognises the critical role the third sector plays in addressing issues of inequality and the needs of disadvantaged communities uh, and the, is committed uh, to supporting the sector across Scotland. The Scottish Government provides the 32 third sector interfaces across Scotland with £8 million for the 2015-16 year to deliver volunteering uh, development social enterprise development, supporting and developing a strong third sector uh, and to build the relationship with community planning. We're taking action to mitigate, as much as that is possible, the effects of welfare reform by investing 2.5 million over 2014-15 and 2015-16 to build the capacity and resilience of communities and local third sector organisations particularly helping them to respond to the worst uh, effects of changes to the welfare system. A point well made by Mr Doris was the impact of poverty on physical and mental health. Uh, and here at uh, risk uh, of uh, possibly touching on, on more contentious issues uh, on this subject, I think many of us, not all of us, but many of us would acknowledge uh, the connection uh, between what is happening uh, in the welfare system uh, and the impact on poverty and all that goes with that. Presiding officer, it's clear to see, uh, clear to see uh, that the £34,000 Homestart Glasgow North West received for a period of one year as part of the One Glasgow Initiative funded by the Third Sector Early Intervention Fund was used to support 15 families through home visiting as a direct result. And I use that as an example because of these 15 families, uh, 13 found out about and engaged with other services and sources of support in their local community. And eight of the families reported an improvement in their capacity to manage their children's physical or emotional health. Furthermore, funding from there for three years uh, of £590,000 was granted to Homestart UK for the Scottish element of their work. And at the end of the first year of this funding uh, in 2013-14, a total of 2,607 families had been home visited and supported across 19 of Scotland's local authority areas. By the six month point of year two of this funding, 1,559 families had been supported. Now, I mention these statistics because they are important. They are real families. And in the course of today's debate, uh, many members have alluded to the impact on individual families and individual children of the work which Homestart does. I will, yep. Bob Doris. Thank you for giving way. It just allows me the opportunity to, to put on record and if you would welcome the good work that Home Start Glasgow North does with such families, particularly in the refugee and asylum seeker community, which I was remiss of me not to mention during my, my opening speech. Minister. Uh, I'm very happy to acknowledge uh, the work which uh, the member refers to and the particular problems uh, and issues and challenges uh, which families uh, from the uh, asylum seeking and refugee uh, communities within Scotland face uh, and Home Start is certainly to be commended uh, on the work that it does with those communities. Other members have uh, mentioned other work uh, that Home Start does. Jim Dornan uh, described some of the, the real challenges which many families face and uh, Liz Smith rightly highlighted the personalised nature of the work which volunteers do for individuals uh, in dealing with those challenges. Cara Hilton and Graham Day uh, highlighted the work of Home Start in their own constituencies, as did Malcolm Chisholm. Liam MacArthur pointed out that many of those helped by Home Start go on to volunteer themselves and, and made very, very valuable points about uh, the challenges faced 
uh, uh, by many families in island areas, a, a point which I certainly understand as well. Uh, Alec Ferguson likewise mentioned uh, the challenges of isolation in other rural areas of Scotland. And Jane Baxter raised important points uh, about uh, encouraging employ employers to support their employees who want to uh, volunteer with organisations uh, in the voluntary sector, uh, such as Home Start and others. Patricia Ferguson described the impact of Home Start uh, on individual families uh, and raised the question of uh, funding. And perhaps in that case, presiding officer, in concluding, uh, it's as well for me to point to the fact that there is a, a new Children, Young People and Families Early Intervention Fund, which is due to be launched by Ms McLeod at an event in Edinburgh on Tuesday the 22nd of June. National voluntary organisations will then have until the 30th of September to apply and Home Start will be eligible to apply for further funding through this process. So can I say in conclusion, presiding officer, uh, I would like again to thank uh, Bob Doris uh, for giving us an opportunity today to talk about an organisation whose work it is right that we all learn about and right that we celebrate and support. Thank you very much, Minister. That concludes Bob Doris's debate on celebrating the work of Home Start in North Glasgow and across Scotland. And I now suspend this meeting until 2.30pm. <laughs>